this evening. Postmortem report reveals cause of death for a man who died at City Hotel. Over 60,000 students prepared for National Grade 6 assessment. Demerara Harbor Bridge Plan 9 transported for installation. In the region, Biden administration sending 1,500 more soldiers to Mexican border. And internationally, clashes rock Sudan ceasefire as UN official seeks aid protection. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for May 3rd, 2023. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, on Sunday, the Demerara Harbor Bridge's Span 9 was transported from the dockyard for our installation. This massive undertaking requires careful planning and coordination as the installation cannot be done while traffic is flowing. The replacement process will leave a significant gap on the bridge, making it imperative that everything is done correctly to ensure the process is executed flawlessly. Minister of Public Works, Bishop on Edgehill, said much should be considered before replacing the span, such as timings and tide. The minister emphasized that there would be announcements and pre-planning which would involve consultations at all levels to ensure that the movement of people and supplies is catered for while the span is being replaced. By replacing the $1.2 billion span 9, citizens will see an enhanced retraction operation with greater capacity to move vessels through the bridge. In other news, in a tragic incident that shook the land of plenty community on the Essequibo coast, a fatal hit and run accident claimed the life of a 46 year old Mahendra Kassoon on Saturday, April 29, 2023. Now, 56 year old Paris Ram Wellington, a driver attached to the Golden Fleece Investment on the Essequibo coast, has been charged with three serious offenses concerning the incident. According to police reports, Wellington was charged with driving whilst breath alcohol exceeds the prescribed limit, failing to stop after the incident, and failing to render assistance to an injured person. Wellington appeared virtually at the Anna Regina Magistrate's Court before Magistrate Esther Sam, where the charges were read to him. Despite pleading not guilty to all charges, the court granted him bail of $200,000 for the charge of driving whilst breath alcohol levels exceeded the prescribed limit and $20,000 each for the charge of fail to render assistance to the injured person and fail to stop after an accident. The cases have been adjourned until May 24th, 2023. Updating our top story we brought to you yesterday, a post-mortem examination conducted on the body of 48-year-old Omar Ali, the man who died at the city hotel on Friday, was conducted today by Dr. Nihal Singh at the Georgian Public Hospital mortuary. Dr. Singh gave the cause of death as a heart attack with a ruptured blood vessel. Last Friday, Ali checked into the hotel around 2 p.m. with a female companion, later identified as Kanisha Thomas. About 15 minutes later, Thomas rushed out of the room and informed the receptionist that Ali had fallen and hit his head on the tile near the toilet. The receptionist, accompanied by Thomas, returned to the room and found him lying naked on the floor, blood oozing from behind his head. The emergency services were notified and Thomas quickly escaped by jumping out of the window. Ali was pronounced dead at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Thomas could not be found but promised to turn herself into the police with a lawyer after the post-mortem examination was done. However, it is unclear if she has done so. Meanwhile, Ali's body was handed over to relatives for burial. Stick around when we return. Over 16,000 students prepare for the National Grade 6 assessment and maintenance work along Rupert Parade Highway, East Coast and Marara. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. 
Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, white spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, jerk seasoning, black pepper, onion powder and ginger powder and document plastic flour and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder and we fry I mean boil in oil we serve with peppies barbecue sauce radical went to the supermarket and she pop up by up not enough things she feel she alone can cook but she wrote in even wrong he shaped like a guy in a mop Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide Peppies we put the pep back into your kitchen some quick money you should check lenders jewelry and pawn shop lenders jewelry and pawn shop lot 238 south road border georgetown get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours we also accept vehicles lenders best rates longest payback period boys i get you plus i could dance again <laughs> lenders jewelry and pawn shop Hey, hey, this is your fancy vehicle and door is your house? Yes, this is my vehicle and actually yeah. I'm waiting on my land. I'm actually renting this house for $50,000. $50,000? You help more? You crazy? You mad? You help me good? Why you buy? Look, let me show you the light. Come with me. Come on down to Fabulous Homes today. Pay $50,000 every month for 36 months or until you reach 50% of your house costs. Move in after 75% of the cost has been paid. This is wonderful. Let's go. Sign me up. All right, let me go and dash away your landlord. To explore our home ownership program, check our Facebook page for more information or come down to our office at Avalon Friendship. Hey, Chinese, tell us, man. Thanks a lot, man. You got to look. Yes, yes. Call us at 227 or 615 8740. Fabulous Homes International Realty, changing tenants into homeowners. At Fabulous Homes, we bring your dreams to life. Welcome back. Over 60,000 students are sitting the National Grade 6 assessment this year, and according to Minister of Education Priya Manichan, they are well equipped and prepared for the exams. The National Grade 6 assessment is slated for today and tomorrow at 517 examination centers nationwide, with students being tested in four subject areas English language, mathematics, social studies, and science. Speaking at the Peters Hall Primary School this morning, Minister Manichan said that her ministry has been working diligently to ensure that all the children have easy access to learning materials. The students have also been provided with breakfast and all the necessary materials they need for the exams, such as pencils, rulers, erasers, and sharpeners. The minister also noted that due to the impact of COVID-19 on the education system over the past three years, the ministry's curriculum was altered for children to better manage the exams. The keen intervention made by the government have since helped the education system recover from the effects of COVID-19, ensuring that children are versatile for any upcoming exams. Minister Manichan also had one-on-one -on -one discussions with several candidates and wished the children the best of luck writing the exams. In other news, 
The public is advised that the Ministry of Public Works, through the Special Projects Unit, will be executing maintenance works along the Rupert Craig Highway and the east coast of the Marara. Road lanes will be closed alternately to facilitate these works and traffic will merge from two lanes into one. Also, motorists plying this route may experience some discomfort since the pavement section will be milled out. The work is scheduled to commence today, Wednesday, May 3rd, and will extend for a maximum of 14 days. Works will be executed during the nights and are expected to commence at 7 p.m. each night. Motorists are asked to be alert, proceed cautiously, and observe all safety signs and protocols when passing through the work zones. Don't go away after the break. Hollywood writers go on strike. Here is what you need to know. And clashes rock Sudan ceasefires as UN officials seek aid and protection. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, five spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and dark green plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil, we serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she probably buy up not enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. This is your fancy vehicle and car is your house? Yes, this is my vehicle and after yeah. I'm waiting on my land, I'm actually renting this house for $50,000. $50,000? You head more? You crazy? You mad? You head no good? Why get the pile? Look, let me show you that light. Come with me. Come on down to Fabulous Homes today. Pay $50,000 every month for 36 months or until you reach 50% of your house costs. Move in after 75% of the cost has been paid. This is wonderful. Let's go. Sign me up. All right, let me go and dash my landlord. Ah. To explore our home ownership program, check our Facebook page for more information or come down to our office at Avalon Friendship. 
Thanks a lot. Yes. Yes. Call us at 227-1380 or 615-8740. Fabulous Homes International Realty, changing tenants into homeowners. At Fabulous Homes, we bring your dreams to life. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. President Joe Biden's administration is sending an additional 1,500 soldiers to the border with Mexico to deal with the increasing number of migrants and refugees trying to enter the United States. Al Jazeera's Patti Kahan has the latest. Impact. Another 1,500 U.S. soldiers and Marines will be arriving on the southern border as soon as next week to join the 2,500 National Guard troops that are already there. The reason? It goes back to COVID. Former President Donald Trump made no secret of his disdain for migrants. He used the COVID emergency to enact a plan to turn back migrants to Mexico before they could ask for asylum, called Title 42, which President Joe Biden kept in place. But on May 11th, the COVID emergency is officially over, and authorities expect as many as 11,000 people will try to cross the border without documents each week. But Biden has changed the rules of what will happen when they get here. Now anyone caught crossing without permission will be presumed to not qualify for asylum, making it easier to send them back immediately, unless they can prove they were denied asylum in another country. Immigration advocates are outraged at Biden's record. So he's been very effective at um, taking away access to asylum, at limiting access to asylum, um, and and. and um, and, and so in, in my view, not great in protecting the rights of, 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 of migrants and asylum seekers and honoring the, their humanity. The Biden administration says it is allowing access for people to claim asylum if they make a very hard to get appointment at the border crossings. It has also changed the rules so that 30,000 migrants from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela can come to the U.S. every month if they apply and have a local sponsor. The military is downplaying the significance of the move. Military personnel will not directly participate in law enforcement activities. While this request is for 90 days, I would point out that DOD has supported DHS on the southwest border for 18 of the last 22 years and every year since 2006. A long-standing issue that has divided the nation and has seen presidents from both parties promising to stop the flow of people so far to little effect. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington. Meanwhile, thousands of film and television writers in the United States have gone on strike. They're demanding better pay and working conditions. Al Jazeera's Rob Reynolds has more. LA is a union town. Members of the Writers Guild Union marched on picket lines outside Amazon Studios in Los Angeles. They want better compensation better residual payments for their work when it is broadcast or streamed, and minimum staffing requirements. We're asking for a reasonable amount of the profits uh, that, they, that the studios make on our work. Uh, it would, to meet our total demands, it would only take 2% of the profit they make on our work. Some of the effects will be immediate. Production will cease on popular late-night talk shows that rely on up-to-the-minute political satire. Nevertheless, actors and talk show hosts expressed support for the Guild. We have a lot of uh, staff and crew that will be affected by this, you know, but, you know, they got to get a fair deal. So, uh, yeah, I'll do whatever I can to support them. Other impacts will be felt the longer the strike goes on. Over time, the production pipeline will start to dry up. Some studios and networks have stockpiled scripts and programs, but they won't last forever. Viewers may see more reliance on unscripted reality TV shows. The trade association that represents the entertainment giants said it had offered writers what it called generous increases in compensation. Guild officials are sounding the alarm about advanced artificial intelligence taking writers' jobs and demanded restrictions on its use. AI is a threat to everybody in the business, and I think that's part of the reason that we have the support of all the other major unions. If they can replace human beings who do this work, the economy is going to collapse. There's just no reason to do that, and the companies refuse to even discuss AI. 
Knock-on effects of the writer's strike will be felt by caterers, electricians, drivers, makeup artists, and many more trades. Economists estimate the strike will cost the economy up to $30 million per day. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Los Angeles. And internationally, fighting between the Sudanese army and a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces has continued despite the declared extension of ceasefire as a senior United Nations official arrived in the country for talks on providing relief to millions of trapped civilians. Al Jazeera's Victoria Gatimbi reports. This video purports to show fighters from the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces at the Presidential Palace in Khartoum. It's the office of the head of the army, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, but the RSF says it's in control of this government building. There's been more intense fighting in the capital as the two sides battle for control. That's despite the announcement of an extension of a ceasefire for one week after mediation efforts by South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir. Looting is still a problem. In Bakri, in the northern part of Khartoum, thieves have stolen clothes and textiles from every store at this market. The UN says the deteriorating situation is making it difficult to deliver aid. Its humanitarian chief, who visited Port Sudan, says security guarantees are needed. Even when there is no formal national ceasefire, we will still require agreements and arrangements to allow for movement of staff and supplies. We will need to have agreement at the highest level and very publicly, and we will need to deliver those commitments into local arrangements that can be depended on. The fighting and instability is pushing more families to flee the capital. This bus of evacuees is heading north to the eastern Red Sea coast. Along the way, they pass through several checkpoints. Some are controlled by the army, others by the rapid support forces. People coming from Khartoum who are escaping the war and trying to find safety and security arrive here under very difficult circumstances. Some people who have passed through here don't have food. Some are sick. Some are very old. In Port Sudan, Navy ships, commercial ferries and airplanes are shuttling people out of the country. Authorities say around 13,000 foreign nationals have left in recent weeks. But more evacuees arrive each day and the city is struggling to cope. We've had a big problem with accommodation in the area. Syrians are currently living on the street. Some families open their houses to families. But for us, youths, we've been staying in the mosques and we've been getting help with basic needs, food and drink. Despite the poor conditions, the influx into Port Sudan will likely go on until the warring sides agree to a ceasefire that holds. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. This brings us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the three weather forecast. And that's Safety V2 headline news for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and in the evening at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.